Welcome to our module on reciprocating compressors. These machines play an important role at your plant and at other large plants around the country. Although there is a wide variety of compressors now in use, we will concentrate on one basic type, the reciprocating compressor. Here's an example of a reciprocating compressor in operation on a unit. As you can see, it is rather large and looks rather complicated. Since these machines are large and relatively expensive, it is important that they remain in operation as much of the time as possible. This means that in most cases, your plant will not have an extra reciprocating compressor that you'll be able to practice on. Since this is true, this course will be made up primarily of graphics, like this. We will use these graphics to show you how a reciprocating compressor works, what the major parts are, and to explain the function of the major parts. We will also pass on some repair and maintenance tips from time to time throughout the course. The actual hands-on experience you will gain in the field will be on the job, when you are called on to assist in the repair of a compressor which is broken down. In most cases, you will have an experienced man working with you to show you the best methods and procedures to use in repair. This will normally be the repair of the part that has failed, and little more. In other words, if a bearing has failed, or if the packing is leaking, that is what you will be expected to repair. It is very rare that you will be involved in the complete disassembly and overhaul of all the parts of a reciprocating compressor. First, let's study the principle of operation of a reciprocating compressor. As with any compressor, this machine does its job by compressing air or some other gas. Compression occurs when a gas is forced to occupy a smaller space or volume than it would occupy at normal atmospheric pressure. This is done, in effect, by squeezing it, as shown in this illustration. As you can see, both of the cylinders contain the same amount of gas. The difference is that the gas in the cylinder on the right has been compressed. The same thing has happened in this example of a reciprocating compressor. The piston is compressing the gas in the cylinder. This type of machine is known as a positive displacement compressor, which means that it does not lose air or gas through leakage during the compression cycle. In other words, you cannot block the discharge line of a reciprocating compressor. If you did, the pressure would build up until something blew up. Here's something else to keep in mind in regard to compressors. Compressing the air, or gas, in this cylinder increases the temperature of the gas. This means that the air, or gas, will be much hotter when it is discharged from the compressor than when it was sucked in through the intake. This often results in damage to the discharge valves from constant overheating. We'll talk more about that later in this module. Here is a simple illustration of a compressor. On the right is the counterweight, mounted on the drive shaft. The drive shaft is connected to the driver for the compressor. Reciprocating compressors can be driven by gas engines, diesel engines, electric motors, steam turbines, or other possible sources of power. The drive isn't really important to the operation of the compressor. The important thing is that the driver turns the drive shaft and the counterweight. This connecting rod is attached to the crankshaft and to the piston. The piston is mounted in the cylinder bore, which fits very closely against the sides of the piston. At the opposite end of the cylinder are the cylinder valves.
This is the suction valve. And this is the discharge valve. Let's assume that the air inside the cylinder is at the same pressure as the atmosphere outside. As the crankshaft turns, the connecting rod pulls the piston to the right. This creates more volume inside the cylinder, and the air pressure drops. The drop in pressure is a result of the same amount of air in the cylinder being given more room to expand into. Now, the atmospheric pressure outside the cylinder is higher than the pressure inside. The result is that the atmosphere forces the suction valve open, allowing air to flow into the cylinder. This continues until the piston reaches the end of the suction or intake stroke. The suction valve is closed by springs, and the air is trapped in the cylinder. This completes the suction or intake stroke. The shaft continues to turn, now forcing the piston forward on the compression stroke. The pressure is built up inside the cylinder until it forces the discharge valve to open and the compressed air, or gas, is forced into the discharge line. This continues until the piston reaches the starting position. At this point, the pressure inside the cylinder and the pressure in the discharge line equalize, and the valve slams shut. That completes the compression stroke and also completes one revolution of this compressor. If the air or other gas is discharged from the compressor on only the forward or back stroke of the piston, then the compressor is single acting. In other words, it compresses the air or gas on only one stroke. Again, the backstroke is the suction or intake stroke. And the forward stroke is the compression stroke. We have some questions for you now on the single acting compressor. Please turn to exercise number one in your workbook.